masks. I know that we are not exactly in a terrible spot in Massachusetts, but if you're following the news, you um, understand why we have masks on today. So let's hope and pray that our country continues to get vaccinated and we will have um, you know, some protection from all of this. But in the meantime, windows open, masks on. I'm looking at some very clever masks. We have a young woman in the front whose mask matches her dress. I like that. Talk with me later. I need some. <laughs> so, thank you. And again, welcome. We have a wonderful thing happening today. Two wonderful things, actually. One is a baptism. A uh, beautiful girl being baptized, and we'll, we'll get to that later on after communion. Everyone can welcome the family that's here today. Our second big news is that Stephanie Dozois, our Christian ed director who stood in this pulpit last week, Today is uh, her first day on the payroll. So she just signed her contract in the parlor. I think angels from heaven came down and sang. She did that because uh, we're so lucky to have her and so happy to have her. Uh, ben Linton, uh, one of our youth, there he's filming. Ben, I told you what my best side is. So um, thank you for doing that. Any other announcements or things going on? We're pretty quiet in the summer, so we don't want, I know there's a nominating committee meeting after church. I know many of you are dying to be on a committee, so <laughs> come by, audition, we might put you on one. Otherwise, the meeting's in the <laughs> Anything else? Anything, anything at all? Okay. Let us join together in our call to worship. <laughs> See God, know God, trust God. Oh, please rise. Please stand for our call to worship. We'll have one Sunday, and I've forgotten. Please stand for our call to worship. Seek God, know God, trust God. Let us sing praises to the Lord and dwell in the midst. Declare God's deeds among the people. Sing praises to the Lord and dwell in the midst. For the needy are remembered, the poor have hope. Sing praises to the Lord and dwell in the midst. Let us join together in our opening hymn.
Brian and Amy's story are bringing us our music today. Amy's at the piano and Brian, we are so awesome. Thank you to both of you. From the book of Exodus, the whole congregation of Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out from this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Now that was a complaining congregation, if you ask me. <laughs> then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread, bread from heaven for you, and each day that people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites, saying that at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. And the Israelites said to one another, What is it? But they did not yet know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you. And from the New Testament, the book of John. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, why did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you're not looking for me, not because you saw the signs, but you're looking to have your fill of bread. Do not work for food that perishes but for the food that endures for eternal life, for which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that the God, that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. And they said, What sign are you going to give us, so that we may see it and believe it? What works are we performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. They were setting the standards really high for Jesus. What do you have to do that's as good as Moses? And Jesus says to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave them the bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said, Give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the reading of the Lord. Man can have one. It's a great concept if you think about it. Men are from 
men and women. It's raining men. Well, we have a similar story of extravagance in our in our reading today, and an unusual precipitation, kind of the same way. The disenchanted Israelites experience a miraculous event when it rains, in a sense. God says, I will rain bread down. It comes up actually from the earth. But in a way, it was raining bread. The Israelites had plenty of bread, everything they needed. And they wanted proof. They didn't want just bread. They're like anybody in a relationship. If you love me, you'll do this for me. And they were saying to God, if you really love us, if you're really real, if you're really there for us, you will do something for us. They wanted proof that God had not abandoned them, and that Moses had led them down the path. You know, here we are in the wilderness. We should stay back where it's nicer. Tell us, Lord, that you didn't abandon us. And God says, don't worry. I know you're hungry. I know you think I don't care. But here, I will show you my rich, extravagant love Behold, I will bring bread from heaven. In the gospel story, the same kind of thing is happening. You know, stuff never changes. They're with a demanding crowd. He's with his disciples, equally demanding. And it's raining bread again. Jesus tells the crowd, he tells the disciples that he is the bread of life. That he is the embodiment of the rich, extravagant love of God. In the sanctuary this morning, it's still raining bread. You and I are still fed and fueled by the same faith as the Israelites, by the same Jesus of the disciples and the crowd. And that's what makes us true community, isn't it? That's what makes us the church. Forget our theological differences. Forget our political differences. Forget where we're at on the socioeconomic ladder. When we're here, we are fed by the love of God. Behold, it is raining bread in this very sanctuary. Here's some stories, three stories I took straight from the Huffington Post. On a World War I battlefield in Belgium in late December 1914, the British and the German soldiers decided to put down their weapons and celebrate Christmas together. They became known as the Christmas Truce. And the men, the soldiers, exchanged food and gifts and stories, and they sang the old Christmas carols together. After a while, they started kicking a soccer ball around, and they played a game of soccer between the trenches. Then after that, after the game, they began to bury their dead together, and they been left on the battlefield. And through that long day, the Christmas celebration, they grew to know each other. The next day, the battle started again. And when they raised their weapons, their guns, they couldn't do it. They couldn't shoot each other. Behold, I will rain bread from heaven. August 12, 2020. A white supremacist entered the Milwaukee Sikh temple and opened fire, killing six people, including the father of a man named Pardeep Kaleka. Kaleka. Just weeks after the tragedy, still trying to deal with the death of his father, one of the white supremacists who had been a part of that, of that killing, who had helped organize it, who was behind it, he called Kalika and said, could we meet? And Kalika wasn't sure that he could do that or wanted to do that, but he said yes. And they met. And the man's name was Arnon Michaels, and Michaels was a 42-year-old white supremacist who told Kalika that he'd been deeply involved in the events that led to his father's death. But now he wanted to be a part of something different. He wanted to go in a different direction. He wanted to end, work at ending the violence. Kalika offered him grace, and together, they began an organization which is still running. It's called Serve to, Serve to Unite, a community group to counter violence with peace. Behold, I will rain bread from heaven. Danny O'Keefe was a first grader at Williams Intermediate School in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. And he served as the water coach for the football team. When the fifth grade football team found out that Danny was being bullied, 
over um, a speech impediment that he had, and over his awesome wardrobe. And he chose to wear a suit and tie to school every day. The football team organized something called Danny Appreciation Day. And more than 40 students showed up at school that day wearing a suit and tie, taking their cue from Danny's characteristic style. Ellen DeGeneres heard about this. So she arranged for Tom Brady to reach out to the children at that school. Because these kids, as Ellen put it, proved that compassion is so much better than exclusion and hatred. Behold, I will rain bread from heaven. When Jesus tells his disciples, I am the bread of life, he means that he is the one who brings God's love to us. That it's a love that will nourish us and sustain us if we come to him, if we reach out to him. And with Jesus in our lives, or Jesus leading our lives, or Jesus as the one in front of us, that bread of life is there as hope for living a life of love and fulfillment. Not a life without pain, not a life without sadness, but a life of meaning, bread of life, living in the community that is nurtured by God. I have a colleague in Northampton, Todd Weir, and he works closely with the homeless populations in Western Mass, um, pretty amazingly. And after many hard years of work, this is what Todd has recently written. You can give people a room to live in, you can provide them three meals a day. You can offer them job training and education. You can offer them a job. You can get them working at that job. You can give them supportive social workers, therapeutic programs. But you cannot give people meaning or purpose or hope. People need community for that. Love and hope and purpose must be truly fulfilled in life with other people who support you and love you and are there for you. In other words, the bread of life. The bread of life is community. A community fueled by the love of God. Or St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. So when we step out in faith, when we find bread that truly satisfies in ways that we never expected, we can remember, behold, I will win bread from heaven. Humidity is rising, barometers getting low. According to all the sources, the street's the place to go. Because tonight, for the first time, just about half past ten, for the first time in history, it's going to start raining then. Well, it isn't raining then exactly. But that rich and abiding love of God is raining all around us. Let us pray. Loving God, we come before you empty. We hunger and thirst for something that will sustain us through all the times of our lives. We chase after things that will disappoint and hurt, we look past the very thing that will heal and cleanse. Christ is our bread of life, the man from heaven, which was and is sent to, to us and will sustain us in our wilderness. Help us to seek the one who will satisfy our thirst and nourish our souls. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Does everybody have a communion? If you don't raise your hand, I'll already give you a communion. Oh, we need to here. Anybody else?
forgive us pray for your ways. By the God of the Son, we have wasted our inheritance. You gave us the earth for our home, but we squander our earth's resources and pour it into our teeth. You gave us neighbors to love, and will you pursue selfish ambitions? You gave us the commandments that lead to human flourishing, and we break your law and forsake your love. You give us our sin and help us to repentance. Draw our wandering hearts back to you, that we may find freedom and obedience to your love. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. With the good news, Christ died for us all who are yet sinners, that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. In the same way, he took the wine and poured it out. And he said, This is my blood spilled for you, the blood of the new covenant. Jesus Christ, as best you're able. 
we get it good. He promised, according to the grace given you, to grow with this child in Christian faith. Help this child to be faithful to Jesus Christ. I heard it's supposed to be a fabulous for children's so This is just terrific. <laughs> and by offering the nurture of the Christian church so that she may always affirm her baptism, we get it. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations to offer them the gift of grace in baptism. To you who witness and celebrate this sacrament today, do you promise your love, support, and care to the one who is about to be baptized as she grows and lives in Christ? If so, answer by saying, we promise our love and support. We promise our love and support. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. I think the proper response. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. They have done this before. <laughs> Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Bless by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. By your Holy Spirit, save this and confess the name of Christ Jesus, that sin may no longer have power over them. Create new life in this beloved child baptized today, so that she may rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and always will be world without end. Amen. Right. By what name will this child be called? Alan Barbara Conley Morris. Yeah. 
into the world with all humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing one another in love, in the unity of the Spirit, in the bond of peace, in the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen.